Today, I'll be showing you guys how to take these modular building pieces and then fully randomize the buildings, as well as be able to really quickly attach a different piece to it and have it automatically cut out anything that it is using. And when you're done, all you need to do is come here and clear it. And now you have a full solidified building you can place wherever you want. So let's get to it. To get started, let's go ahead and enable our plugins. So we're going to search for procedural and we want to turn on procedural content generation framework, BCG, and restart your engine if you haven't already. After that, we're going to need two things. Of course, our PCG graph, and I'm just going to call it PCG modular building. And we're going to need a blueprint that houses all our information. So I'm going to add a blueprint class. It's going to be an actor, and this is going to be a BP modular building. Let's open up our blueprint that we just created. And here, all we're going to do is add our PCG component and the PCG graph that we created. Click it inside, and we're pretty much done with the setup. We don't need anything else in here. But we are going to need some variables exposed and some settings. So let's go ahead and create them now so we don't have to keep going back and forth all the time. Starting with static mesh. We're going to create a static mesh variable and the type is going to be of static mesh and it's just going to be an object reference and it is going to be exposed. Then we're going to need three floats. So I'm going to select float here and I'm going to click plus two more times. So I get two more floats and one of them is going to be an integer. So for the three floats that we're going to need, we're going to need to have the chance of doors, chance of bottom windows and chance of upper windows. And the final thing that is going to be an integer is just going to be our seed. And we want all of these exposed. So this way, when we create the buildings, we have the option to actually modify how many windows we get and how many doors. Now, this is not a set number, but just a chance of spawning. But there are ways of, of course, doing specific numbers as well, but that's involving custom nodes. And that's just a little bit outside the scope for this video. And then the seed will allow us to just randomize all of our stuff. With all the variables in here, the one thing we need to do is actually modify the static mesh in terms of how the PCG is going to read it. Because PCG graphs can't read the static mesh directly. What they can do is read the string. And this is specifically for using them for the static mesh spawners and not as an input for something else. So in our construction script, we're going to grab our PCG and get the graph instance. And here we're going to search for set string parameter. Now we haven't created this yet, but we will. And for this, this is going to be our static mesh. And the value we need to do is get it from our static mesh. So from here, I'm going to drag this out. And then we need to get object path string. Under utilities, this one right here. Go ahead and select it, and we can pipe this right into its value. With that in the, out of the way, let's go ahead and just copy this and create the parameter in the PCG graph. So in here, under graph settings, we'll go ahead and create a new parameter. Now, if you don't have this, you might be in 5.2. It's only available in 5.3 forward. So I'm going to rename this to the static mesh that we had, and I'm going to change the type to be a string. And that's all we need to do on this one. So now let's go ahead and start with our PCG graph. Let's get actor data. And for our actor data, we want a single point on self. And then we want to add attribute. Now the attribute target is going to be what it's going to be called. So I'm going to call it static mesh. And then we can go right here and get static mesh. And this is our string. And I can just plug this in here and it'll go ahead and convert it. All these settings it will convert accordingly. But then from here, go ahead and drag out a static mesh spawner and we need to change the mesh selector type from its default to selector by attribute and then under attribute name you want to put in static mesh which is what we called it here so now if we go into our actual level our mesh is currently empty so now i'm going to grab this and I'm plug this in and you can see it populates if it doesn't immediately populate you might just need to move this and offset it so it automatically regenerates but you can see we now have this populating on the different buildings here like so so this is an easy way of storing the static static mesh into the static mesh spawners. But now we want to populate in the windows and things of that nature. Now, the easiest way I think to do this is to use sockets. All static meshes can have sockets on them and you can place them wherever you want. And we can use the information from the sockets to spawn anything we want, like the doors, windows, etc. So I'm going to go ahead and open this static mesh. And just to the right of the details, you have the socket manager. You can go ahead and open this. If you don't see it under window, make sure socket manager is turned on. And we just need to add some sockets in here. So let's start with a simple door. When you add it, you'll see you get a little icon here. And you can just move this around to wherever you want. And the nice thing is down here under advanced, you have the preview static mesh and a tag. So the tag we're gonna set is door, because these are gonna be our doors. And we can go ahead and just add a preview mesh here. So I'm gonna select one of these doors and then I'm just gonna populate it in here. So I have a nice preview of it. So I can get the position exactly where I want it. So I can move it forward or back according to the meshes that we're gonna be using. And then I'm gonna duplicate this door a few times. I'm gonna take this and maybe put a door here, put a door on this side and just go around and place the doors on all the sides you might 
want a door and all positions where you might want a door. So there we go. I have placed a door location basically everywhere where I would like to have a door now to make it easier so I don't have this in the way. I'm going to go ahead and just select these and clear out preview mesh from these. We don't need it anymore. And we're going to do the same thing for the windows. So I'll make a new socket and this is going to be bottom windows. The tag will be bottom window and the preview mesh. Again, I can grab one of these guys, slot it in. And now I can move it forward and you can see we now have our window. Now this window in our case is pretty small. I would like to have it to be a bigger window, honestly. I'm actually gonna change the relative size here to 1.5 instead of one. So they're just a little bit bigger. Now you can keep it to be 1.0 and you can modify this in the PCG graph itself. It's all, all up to you. It depends on what kind of meshes you have. If they're all consistently small windows and you want bigger windows or vice versa, you can just adjust it on the socket and it'll propagate to everything. So I'll go ahead and take this and I'm gonna duplicate it around and place it in all of our areas areas where I potentially would like a window. And there we go. We now have our window positions on this building. This is everywhere where we could potentially have a window. And now we want to do the upper window. These are going to be more of the balcony style. So I'll go ahead and add a new socket. And this is going to be our upper window. And just like before, I'm going to grab one of these for a reference, plug it in. And now I can get it into position where I think it would look good. And the same as the bottom ones, we'll go ahead and just duplicate it around. But we want to make sure it has a tag and we'll call it upper window. Go ahead, duplicate it and position. It. And there we go. Now I've hidden the preview of the doors, but that's just because we were placing the windows and they could potentially be in the same location. So again, in the way you can leave these previews there, they're just that they're previews. And the final thing I want to add are chimneys. So I'll add a socket for chimney and the tag will just be chimney. I'll grab one of the chimneys and use it as our preview. And now I can go ahead and just position this accordingly. And I'll just set up two locations on the chimney. So maybe one here and one over here. So now all the sockets for this mesh are done. And we can get started with a PCG graph to actually start utilizing it. So now to start utilizing the points, I'm just going to select this and I'm going to comment it out to be our main building spawner. Just keep it a little bit organized. And now we need to actually spawn the points. Now the easiest way to get it isn't by right click and say searching for sockets because that doesn't actually work. It's to grab this execute blueprint, drag it in and under blueprint element type, search socket. And you can get mesh sockets to points. Now this requires a static mesh input, but luckily we do have a static mesh attribute that we can pipe in here. So I'm going to right click and get actor property. And in our property name, I'm going to type in static mesh. Because as you recall, that is the variable name that we have placed in here. And I'm going to take this out and plug this into static mesh. Now, quick note, I have had it where this variable, this static mesh says, oh, it is actually not valid. It doesn't understand it. And it errors out with a big red thing underneath. If that does happen to you, just restart Unreal and it's going to be fine. It's a bug that I just found recently, but it's good to know about. So with this, we're going to close this and the tag that we want to actually use is going to be door because that is the tag that we actually used here. Again, copy paste it depending on how simple the tag is. It might be easier. And then from here, we want to do a copy points because we want to copy these points onto the original mesh. Now I'm going to take this actor data. I'm just going to duplicate it down here and pipe that into the target. And if I was to sample this, you wouldn't actually see anything, even though I'm moving this around or anything. For some reason, this copy points does not allow you to sample. But if I just go static mesh spawn, here and I'm just going to add something to this just under the descriptor, I'm just going to select this cube. I'm going to place it in here. You'll see that it is actually spawning them. So for some reason, the copy points node, you can't sample it for, for actual points. But as you see, it does work. And we now have a spot here where we have placed the doors. Fantastic. So now instead of this, let's go ahead and populate all the static meshes in here, all the door variations we have. So in here, I'm going to select all these four doors and I'm going to make four indexes for them. There you go. All four have been piped in. And if I take a look here, we now have one of four doors on every single one of these, which is fantastic, but we have way too many doors. So for this, I'm going to detach this and we're going to pull out of copy points and we're going to search for noise and we want attribute noise. And then we want to get a density filter. Now I'll go ahead and plug this into our static mesh spawner. For density filter, I'll make the lower bound to be zero and the upper bound, we've actually created the variable for it, chance of door. So I'll go ahead and take this and I'm going to copy the name so I don't misspell it. And then here I'll open the density filter, right click, get actor property. And the property name is going to be our chance of doors. And that is going to go into upper bound. Collapse this. And now if we take a look at this, we now have far fewer doors. There's a door there and it seems no other door is actually available. If I change the chance of doors to, let's say 0.5, we have more doors, 0.3, but 
As you see, it is changing the amount of doors, but it's not changing the type of door or anything of that nature. And that's where this seed comes in. So for our attribute noise, we actually want to expose our seed. So I'll open this up and I'll duplicate this get actor property and I'll call the property name seed, which is our name of the seed. And I'll just plug that into our seed. Very simple here. But we also want to actually randomize the windows that appear there. So we're also going to put the seed into here, into the static mesh spawner. So now if I change the seed to, let's say 10, you can see the door has changed 15, 20. I can just drag this around and I will get different doors and different amount of doors based on the spawn chance. So if I change this to 0.5, you can see we have more doors and they're going to be different every single time. Now you might want to keep them all within a certain theme. Of course, for your setup, this is just to show you how you can randomize them very easily. You can have specific sockets for stone doors, for wood doors, etc. That's up to you to figure out how you want your thing to look. In our case, I'm just making all the doors be a possibility for these buildings. If you guys are enjoying the tutorial so far, I would love to hit the like button. And while you're down there, consider subscribing for more awesome tutorials like this. But now let's go ahead and spawn the windows. For the windows, we can pretty much take everything here and just duplicate it down below. The main things we need to change are the mesh sockets to point tag. As you recall, for our bottom window, this is our tag. So I'm just going to go ahead and copy it and paste it into our new tag. So now it's only going to do the bottom windows and we need to change the static mesh spawner to have windows instead of doors. Now, as you see, we have round windows and square windows, and I would like it to randomly pick between either doing round windows or square windows, but I don't want to ever match both together. So let me show you how that can be done. For this first static mesh spawner, I'll just populate it with these round windows. A quick note, I've noticed that when you duplicate the get actor property, it sometimes stops being a regular get actor property and has this in node. It's as simple as deleting it and then doing another get actor property and just piping in the information one more time. I'm not sure why it happens, but it seems to be a little bit buggy when, when duplicating. Now that this is piped in with the round ones, I'll duplicate it. And for this one, I'm going to just populate it with the square ones. And I'll go ahead and pipe in the seed in here the same as before now we want to change what it spawns right so the easiest way to do that is with a simple bool so the first thing i'm going to do is actually rename this to spawn bottom windows and then i'm going to add a branch node now from this density filter it's going to go into the branch and then output a is going to go to here and output b is going to go here now if i expand this branch node i have output to be as an option. So what we're going to do is go into graph settings and we're going to add a new parameter here and it's going to be type bool and we're going to rename this to random window shape. I'm going to copy that immediately so I have access to it. And here I can go get random window shape and plug that into output B. And now in our blueprint, we can get our graph instance and do set bool parameter, plug in our node, plug in our graph instance. And then from our bool, we just say random bool. And that'll just pick randomly true or false and the name we're gonna paste in random window shape. So now if we come here, you can see we now have it randomly selecting. And sometimes we have square windows, sometimes we get round windows, but we have the problem of them overlapping. So let's go ahead and remove the windows where there are doors. So in our PCG graph, right before this branch, I'm going to add ourselves a difference node. Now, the actual density filter will go into source, the output will go into the in of the branch, and the difference is going to cut out these doors. So from this spawn doors node, out of the static mesh spawner, we're going to use that in the differences. But then on the difference node, make sure instead of density function minimum, you want to set it to binary. So that way, just it's an on off cutout. But now if I come here and I just change the seed, you will see it will still occasionally spawn the windows, but they will never overlap the doors. It'll be right next to them because of our placement of our windows. And you can see we now have a window in between the two doors, but they will never be on top of it. So that's fantastic. So now we need to do the upper level and the chimney. As you see, it is quite simple. We can just take the spawn doors. We can just duplicate it down here, come here, and we want the upper windows now. So let's take this tag, upper window, copy it. In our mesh sockets to points, put in our new setup, and I can rename this to upper windows. And of course, for the static mesh spawner, I got to go in and replace some with these. There we go. I populated all four of these into here and already you can see it is spawning all of them right there. And if I change the seed, of course, we'll get different amounts and different types of them. And they're always going to be in the correct location. And one thing I actually missed is on these bottom windows, we still have a chance of doors here. And for this, we still have chance of doors as well. So we want to come here and just copy chance of bottom windows and chance of upper windows and place them into our density filter for instead of chance of doors for both of these. Go ahead and replace those. And that should be it. And we still need to do the chimneys above. So I'll take this spawn upper windows, duplicate it down. And this is going to be our chimneys. And of course, we need to change the mesh socket points to chimneys. And in our case, we don't actually have a property that we did chance of chimneys. And this isn't 
intentional on my part. This is just to show you that you don't actually need it. If you want to just have a random chance in general, I just set this to be 0.25 and I just have chimneys being a 25% chance consistently of spawning. And of course, for the static mirror spawner, I'll go ahead and replace all of these with the chimneys. And here's our full setup that I can just randomize and get random buildings with different kinds of chimneys occasionally. Sometimes you'll have both of them, sometimes you won't. So it's nicely procedural in this aspect. Now let's say we want to add the attachments. Let's say I want this guy and we want to attach it here and plug it in. Well, I don't want to spawn the window here then. I also want all of these pieces to have all the same ones. So what you need to do is for every piece that you want this kind of setup on, you open the static mesh and add the sockets to it accordingly of where you want things to spawn. And that's what I did on these. As you can see, I've added in some sockets. This is a different shape. This is more of a T intersection as well as adding it on this guy here and here. You just go in and add the sockets of where you want these points to be. As always, the full project is going to be available on my Patreon. And thank you so much to my patrons for supporting what I do. It really means a lot. And if you have any questions or just like to join the community, the link to the Discord is down below. Come join us, say hi. And again, thank you so much to the patrons. Now let's get back to it. After that, you can just take your piece and you can make a duplicate of it and then just swap out your static mesh. It is going to place the windows and doors in the same setup you had before and you can change it for this piece. But as you see here, we do have an intersection problem where I don't want things to actually spawn when they intersect. So let's fix that next. Now we need the bounds of the actual building, but we don't actually want the building in the end. So there's a way of doing it because if we were to actually sample this actor data, if I debug it, you'll see our point is just this because it doesn't have all the information of this full building. So what we're actually going to do, is we're going to open our actual blueprint and we're going to add a static mesh in here. And you may be wondering why we're adding the building in here when we're already doing in the PCG graph. And that's because when we actually finalize this building, it won't actually be part of the final piece. This piece will just be left alone. What I mean is this. I take the static mesh and can drag it out and I can do a set static mesh. And we already have our static mesh in here. So we can just drag it in here. But we want to change the visibility on this to be hidden. We change the visible off. And now if I come here and I sample this get actor data, you could see it is actually getting the full bounds of that object because it understands the bounds of that static mesh. We're not actually previewing that static mesh. It is only previewing this one. If I disconnect this, you can see it goes away. We'll go ahead and reconnect it. But now we can use this data to cull out everything else. So all we need to do is get this get actor data and we'll duplicate it down here. And instead of self, we're going to do all world actors and by tag. So we need to add a tag to our blueprint. So in our blueprint self, search for tag and we want to give it a tag. And I'll just call this modular building and I'll copy it. And now in our get actor data, we'll put in our actor selection tag. Now we want to select multiple and we want to ignore self and children. Otherwise it'll cut out itself from itself. Then right before the static mesh spawners, we add a difference node and we're going to cut out this setup and then we'll plug this in here and we're going to need this everywhere. So I'm going to take this and I'm going to duplicate it and we're going to just attach it pretty much in all the locations between every single static mesh spawn. There we go. So it's plugged into the difference node. Now for these differences, make sure they're all set to binary because we only want it to be an on off. So I'll just control select all of these, set them to binary and we're all set there. So now, as you see, there's no window here. If I move this out of the way, we have windows. As soon as I bring it a little bit too close there, you'll see it disappears. Now it still spawns the doors and windows on this piece and it still spawns them on this piece. So I take here and I change the seed. It will still spawn all of them. It just won't spawn them in these locations. But now as to the question of, well, now that we have this, why did I put the static mesh in there if we're just using it with PCG anyway? If I come here and let's say I'm happy with this building, this is the setup I want. I want to lock it in. All I have to do is come here to PCG and click clear PCG link. And now if I click on here, I have this full graph with all the instances that we've created and I can just drag it away. But here's the note. These are all the instances of it. This static mesh is from our PCG graph. It is not from this, from the original graph. And I can show that by going here and changing the, the visibility on the static mesh to be visible, compiling. And now if I do the same thing with this one, let's say go down here and click clear. And I, I select it now, you will see I'm selecting the static mesh of the original PCG graph. So if I click the windows and I drag it away, there's the stamp with our building, but that original static mesh doesn't come with it. And of course I can regenerate it now again, but the main thing is you don't worry about that static mesh. It is there purely for your reference. The reason we are spawning it in the PCG graph is because now when we create the stamp, it comes 
comes with it. Of course, we want to have visibility off because we don't actually care about that piece. Again, now that these are just regular blueprints with instance pieces, we can just place them and rotate them and do whatever we want. Now, effectively, we can just create really quick buildings using the setup. Just attach them we Can make another copy here. Grab, let's say, this piece and we can just extend all of these buildings in any way we want. And they also follow the scaling. So if I scale this up, everything scales accordingly, as you see here. In my case, I should have probably moved this window a little bit out, but you can see everything is adjusting accordingly and can just embed this a little bit further in if I wanted to. And you see where they're overlapping, it no longer is spawning any of the extra stuff. So with this, you can go ahead and create any kind of shape building that you want. It'll automatically have the doors and windows in positions that you would like them to have and with the variation that you want them to have. So instead of manually dragging out a building and then a building and then placing a door here, placing a door here, right? this, you have a lot of control over this, but you're going to want them within a certain style anyway. And this method by just putting into a blueprint with some PCG and some prep with the sockets will allow you to really quickly create big cities modularly. Now, if creating buildings yourself is more of your style, like creating the interiors and exteriors, well, check out this video here where I start my full building PCG series.